If you guys are looking for the cheapest and most reliable coins on the market, make sure to head over to utnice.com and use code CHIEF for 6% off at checkout. Now let's go ahead and jump right into this video. What's up guys, it's Beef Chief here and welcome back to another video on my channel. Today we're going to be taking a deep dive into one of the best trading methods on FIFA 22, which is the gold shadow trading method. And as we get into this, all I ask is that you guys do please drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out. So as you can guess in the name, what we're going to be trading with is gold cards that have shadows on them. Now, what is the reasoning behind this? Why do we do this? So these become really, really easy cards to trade with because as you may know, the shadow chemistry style is something that has a lot of value on the market. Right now, the shadow chem style is selling for about 3.4, 3.5K, as you can see. So what this does is players on the market that already have a shadow chem style applied to them have a lot more value than the same exact card without the shadow chem style and one of the best examples of this is going to be ryan fredericks here so this fredericks card just his gold card sells for about 1700 1800 coins as you can see here not a ton of value to him but if you add the shadow chemistry style to this card he typically sells for around 5,000 coins. As you can see, the cheapest ones on the market are both 5.1K a piece. So this adds over 3,000 coins to Frederick's value. And this happens with a lot of different cards, a lot of the popular cards as well. If we take a look at Kimpembe here with a shadow, let's try check his price. So he's basically going 8,000 coins on the dot. And if we check him without a shadow, you can see, oh, 7,000 there with a shadow. Oh, ho, ho, almost got one. You can see his value without a shadow is typically around like 7.3, 7.4K. So what we're looking to take advantage of here is people who are listing cards up with a shadow chemistry style on them, but they're listing the card up basically undervalued because they don't realize the value that the shadow chemistry style adds to the card. So how exactly are we going to do this? What we're going to do is you're going to set your quality to gold rare here. You're going to set your chemistry style to shadow, obviously. You want to set your max buy now to 9,900. And the reasoning for this is this doesn't really work as well for cards that are more expensive, cards that are, you know, 10K or higher, because the Shadow Chem style won't add as much value to that card. And then what you want to do, this is the key part, is the max bid price. You want to set the highest max bid price you can to the point where there is a maximum of one card over the hour. So what that means is if I scroll to the end here, you can see there's two cards here, this Gosens and this Pereira, that expire in over an hour. They expire in five and a half hours and five hours, 45 minutes. So what I need to do is I need to make it so there's maximum one card over the hour. So I bump my max bid price down to 950. And now if I scroll to the end here, if we go have a look, there is no other card over the hour. So again, you can have either zero cards that expire in over an hour or one card that expires in over an hour. You cannot have two or more because that makes this next part of the method not work. So the key part of this method is now that you've got this set up, you scroll to the end here and what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit square over and over on the last card. And what this allows you to do is compare price. And when you have this filter kind of set up the way we do where there's maximum one card over the hour, what this does is every time you hit square to compare price on a player and then back out, this refreshes the market. So any card that gets listed up and would fit into this filter would actually pop up for you when you compare price and back out on these cards. And again, that only works if you have it set up to the point where there's maximum one card over the hour. So that's an absolutely key part here. So what you're gonna do after that is since you're at the 59th minute and your compare price refreshing, you should, in theory, be the quickest person to see the cards that pop up because you're all the way at the end here. You are seeing these cards as they pop up and potentially finding deals on them. And then from here, it really comes down to market knowledge. You need to start memorizing the prices of these cards. And what that entails is every time you see a card pop up here that you think could potentially be a deal, what you need to do is if you think it's a really good deal for the price, like I think that Rudiger could be, I've missed him though. If you think it's a really good deal, quickly try to buy them. 
if you're not sure what you need to do is go in check the price of the cards that are propping up for example i don't know exactly what rudiger's price is with a shadow so i'm gonna go check his price here because the massive part to this method is knowing the prices of all these players so right now i see that the cheapest rudiger with a shadow will sell for 2700 coins so what i'm personally doing to help me memorize these cards is i'm creating a spreadsheet over here uh, so i'm putting rudiger in he goes for 2,700 coins with a shadow. And over and over, every single new card I see, I'm just going to go ahead and try to memorize every single card that pops up here. For example, I saw a Valverde there earlier. That Valverde with a shadow, we saw him for like 3,300. Right now, he's selling for what? Like 3,300, basically on the dot. So I would just put in here, Valverde, 3,300. And basically, as you memorize these cards this will just kind of expand your market knowledge and as you go you'll be able to pick up more and more cards and be the first one on all of these players just because you'll know the prices better than any other person you're essentially not going to pick up cards on this filter if you don't know the prices because people are so quick and there's so many people on this filter that's a good deal there's so many people on this filter that it's going to be next to impossible to pick up these cards if you don't already know the prices. So that is the absolute key here is knowing the prices. And then there's going to be other little tips and tricks you can add into this. Like, for example, when you go to the end here, this little yellow highlighted part when you click on a player starts on the bid price. But if you just flick this down to the buy now... The next player you go over to click on, it'll already be hovering over the buy now. So that is big for when, you know, a new player pops up, you could potentially be a second quicker because you don't have to flick down when you're uh, when you're going in to buy them very quickly. So that's a key there as well. And then another thing we need to talk about is position modifiers. If, say, you find a center mid that's converted all the way up to a striker, that is going to be a great card to buy because those position modifiers, just like the shadow, all have a ton of value attached to them. So, you know, if you have a center mid converted all the way to a striker, that card is used a center mid to cam, a cam to center forward, and a center forward to striker. So people that want to use that card at striker, start him there for chemistry, are going to pay a lot more for a striker version so they don't have to buy the midfielder and then go buy all the position modifiers. So let's say that Valverde that we saw for, he goes 3,300 coins with a shadow. I guarantee you I could sell 38, 3,900 coins with him as a striker. So that's a big point here as well. Let me exit out and go back in. EA absolutely doing me in here with my connection not loading me in but that is absolutely massive there is so the shadow is adding massive value to these cards which is why we like trading with them and then if they have position modifiers even more value being added to them as well so the big thing is sitting there and just memorizing these prices being aggressive at the beginning not being afraid to lose coins is a big thing in this method because if you're just buying cards over and over and over at the beginning, maybe you lose 100 coins here, 200 coins there. But the thing is, you're gaining the market knowledge that is going to help you make more coins in the future. And at the end of the day, it is a very simple method once you get that filter with your maximum buy now set up. You just sit there at the end, at the all the way at the end here, uh, at the 59th minute, and you just sit there and you compare price over and over and over and just try to snipe deals and it it just comes down to who the fastest person is you're not going to get every single card but you're going to be getting cards where you're making 1500 2000 coins every every other every other card so it's absolutely massive that you do that for example if we scroll through here kunde there got bought for 3.2 rudiger for 2.1 that's not a great deal on Kempembe. he goes like 8.4 so no profit to be had there and then this is the next point we get to if there are these cards that pop up and now you're not able to do this filter because there's cards here listed for 800 bid 800 bid what you need to do is you can actually get these out of your filter with a very easy method what you can do is just bid on these cards so this dembele i'm gonna bid 1100 on and this Kempembe, i'm gonna bid 1100 on so now the next time you search this filter here these cards shouldn't pop up because you've just bid them over the filter that you're searching for. So now you can see when you search, these cards aren't popping up because they're over the bid price that you're searching for. So that's a way that you can kind of adjust the filter 
as well to kind of to kind of fit what you need it to do there which is very very nice now again a lot of cards i'm seeing that i don't know here so what i'm gonna do is just go check the price of a bunch of these cards and store these in the memory bank for later this is going to be a lot of your time at the beginning is just kind of using your time to memorize these cards so i'm gonna go ake here and i know he goes 1900 and then next up there was a davinson sanchez there if i take a look here davinson should have typed davinson in all the way what's his rating anyway 79 is a bit too high spurs are a bit bit meh let's see here 2000 there for davinson sanchez so davinson i put 2000 and this just allows me whenever i see these cards next even if i don't remember the prices i could quickly glance over and see the price but you're eventually going to need to memorize these prices because of how quickly these cards do go. So if we take a look at LaCroix here, LaCroix is going to be 2200 for him with a shadow. And it really is just the same thing over and over. But once you're doing this, you'll see some of the massive traders. For example, one of the big guys is on this type of method is going to be Flair. He's a guy that'll make 70 to 80,000 coins an hour doing a method like this because he has every single card memorized just locked down in his brain and then any card that pops up that is a deal you can just quickly pick up because you're going to be faster than everybody else and the reason this method kind of always seems to work is since it's a method that takes a lot more work in terms of memorization and getting these cards down and spending time on it there's not going to be as many people doing a method like this just because not as many people want to put the time in to do this but if you're able to kind of get this method down in your brain and really memorize all these cards you're going to be making crazy coins because there's not a lot of people that are going to be as committed to kind of memorizing how to do this method as you are here so again kimpembe there 8.8 .8, not a great deal Ooh, LaCroix there 1100 oh we missed him see that would have been a nice thousand coins profit on that card and he's gone there you just got to be the quickest person to the cards here LaCroix there for 22 not a great deal I'm not sure of Kunde's price he sold 3.2 earlier so I'm gonna okay so Kunde's gone there for 3k I think he sells for about 3.4 so I don't think I've really missed out on much there but even if you just have a vague idea of what these cards go for a lot of them what this will allow you to do is when you see those really, really good deals, like this Upa Meccano for 2K, who I think is a very nice deal, you'll be able to make a lot more coins. And before the video, something I got as well, as another example of position modifiers, this Fred with a shadow typically just goes for 3,300 coins. But since he's converted all the way up to a striker, I'm going to list him 3.6 here because I think those position modifiers are going to add a lot more value to him. Now, this Upa Meccano, I don't really know his price, but what I know is that LaCroix goes for 2300 So Upa Meccano, it has to at least go 25 here with a shadow, I would imagine. And it's things like that you can use to kind of memorize these cards as well. Wow, is he the same price as LaCroix? That's crazy to me. We're still going to make coins here. Got him for 2k, going to list him 2300 So again, another card we've learned there, going to just pop him in the old spreadsheet here and again these cards will sell for different different prices at different times throughout the year it's just kind of something you got to get used to you know and you'll be able to sell these to lazy buyers for more if you'd like as well so we'll list that 2300 what is that lose 115 on tax 185 coins there nothing special but once you start hitting cards like you know, you hit a Theo Hernandez for 3K, you hit a Kimpembe for 5K. It's cards like that where you're really going to start making your coins when you hit those big cards. But even those cards for 300, 400 coins a piece will really add up over time. And what I recommend when you buy these cards is not every time exiting out to go list them up. You know, as you're doing this, when you buy a card, let me bump this down to the buy now as well. When you buy a card, you can just hit continue searching so you know go buy like 10 11 12 cards with shadows and then list them all up at once so you know you're not wasting time going between the menus this whole time and sometimes you do just need to update this filter you know play around with the buy nows and stuff just to make sure it's not you know glitching out and not actually searching for these cards like it was there now i'm not sure what davies goes for and in general as well you can kind of uh check a player's normal price on footbin and then get an idea of what they'd go for with a shadow so he's 2.2k without a shadow those aren't bad deals at all those are both good deals damn 
He goes like 8-5 with a shadow. Th those would have been some nice pickups. But yeah, you can just get a general idea of what those cards go for. Edder Militao, I know, is like 2.3k with a shadow. So again, just getting used to these prices is what's really going to make you your coins. And sitting at the end here until you do manage to get some nice deals on these cards and it is just about being the quickest person so it's something you need to kind of do over and over and you'll just get better at it as time goes on but guys that's gonna be it for this video if you did enjoy it make sure to like comment and subscribe and i'll catch you in the next video